in Leipzig im Conny Island und wir haben hier Susan Kerrigan und äh, am Mikrofon erstmal einen schönen guten Abend und äh, wie war die Woche bisher? Oh, it was really good and it was really bad. <laughs> but it's good, good. The bad part was a long driving and the tiredness, but when it came to the music, it was great. We had good, great shows. I've been enjoying it. Heard so good. Yeah. <laughs> Wann warst du das letzte Mal in Deutschland? I was in Germany in 2003 with the Slackers. Mm -hmm. We had a real long 34 city tour. I'm not sure exactly which cities I, you know, it's been so long, but that was the last time. Okay. Äh, ja, Miss Kettungen, ähm, Sie, Sie waren, ähm, von Anfang an der, der, der Reggae-Geschichte dabei, äh, bei, bei der Entstehung des Reggae. Ähm, können Sie sich an Ihre Anfangszeiten erinnern? Well, I always loved to sing when I was a little girl. You know, I used to watch them and pretend. I used to have my broom, I used to have a mic and sing, but I never ever dreamed of really being a professional singer, because it all happened by chance. But my father is a minister of religion, so I was in the church choir, but, you know, I, I didn't think of being a singer. But knowing that I love to sing, a friend of mine, my best friend, her boyfriend used to work at this radio station in Jamaica, JBC, and she can sing too, so he asked her to sing this song. And she said, no, let, 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 let Anne, Anne is my real name, sing it, Anne, A-N-N-E, -N -N -E. right? So, I said okay, went to the studio, and that was the Black Ark studio of Lee Perry. So I sang the song, which was Love My Life. I think some people know of it, because it's on the internet, everything is on the internet. And after I finished singing it, then Lee Perry said, boy, I love your singer. You know this song? You're speaking to me. So I said, yes, it was heard so good. Because loving music, I knew everything. Because I was singing along with the radio and things. So he asked me to try it. And I just sang it. The Mighty Diamonds were there, put in the backup voices. And he said, boy, you have a sexy voice in a girl. What's your name? And I said, oh, my name is Anne Kadoga. And he said, Anne? Mm-mm. Your name's Susan. And that's how I became known as Susan. You know, I owe the whole of my career to Lee Perry, no matter what anybody says. And I sang that, and he said, you know, I'd like you to sing some more for me. And he gave me a little cassette, you know, those days, with songs. Say, learn these, and Sunday you come here. And I went back, and every Sunday I'd go and I'd sing. And he was very protective of me, and nobody could leave my singer alone. It's my singer, you know, that kind of way. And I'd sing and sing, and that's how it all started. And Black Ark Studio with Scratch. Which year was it? This is, was the, coming on to the end of 1974. That's when I recorded it. Heard so good. Gab's irgendwelche Musik zu der Zeit, die dich beeinflusst hat oder die du super gerne gehört hast? Well, the Supremes, Dan Ross and the Supremes, and early on I used to like the Platters and Benny King and um, you know those kind of American rock, pop, soft pop, soul music. And then in Jamaica we had a style, all the popular songs. We'd reggae, reggae them or rock steady them. But people always used to say I was always doing people, other people's songs, you know. But that was the way we did it in, in those days. And in Jamaica, well, we had a lot of, well, afterwards I got to know, like, and admire, like, Master Griffiths and my other, you know, fellow artists and things. And Dennis Brown, I remember the first TV show I did in Jamaica, Dennis Brown was on it. He was like 14 or something, you know. That was after I went back, after Heard So Good just zooped up the BBC chart. That was a TV show called Teenage Dance Party or something. Some, yes, from JBC with Alfonso Walker. 
he's still he's still in the business even though that show isn't there anymore you know he still makes videos and things you know I, I don't even have a video I've had a very strange career and <laughs> I appear in public infrequently so <laughs> das ist eine gute Überleitung zur nächsten Frage weil äh Du hast gerade erzählt, du hast, es gibt keine Videos oder du hast keine Videos von dir, aber äh, wir wissen, äh, du hast ja bei Top of the Pops mit teilgenommen und äh, vielleicht äh, kannst du was erzählen, wie das entstanden ist. Well, like the week before I got a call from London, this is in Jamaica. Oh, your record, are you Miss Cadogan, your record is on BBC Chart, you know, I need you to come over, you have to go on TV. So I said, what? I mean, I didn't think anything about it and I hadn't heard anything from... Mr. Perry. So, anyway, so they sent a ticket and I was zooped off. I remember on a Tuesday landing at Heathrow, right? Zooped into Holiday Inn and all these men came and measured me up and things to get clothes and I was taken out and shopping. And Thursday morning, we went into the BBC studios and recorded. Every time you go on top of the pops, you have to re-record your song using the BBC orchestra. There's some union law. So I record the song and then in the evening you go back and you mime to what you have recorded in the morning. And I was on with like three degrees and I was on once with the moments. They turned into Ray Goodman and Brown. And that time Minnie Ripperton was on the chart too. But I think she was ill, so we only had a video of her. And I met so many famous people, but I was my first public performance, that Top of the Pops. And they had me in this outfit that left my navel out. And I cried, I said, I'm not going on, I'm not singing, my mother would this. And the sewers had to come and sew it in, and I didn't have any contact lenses. Oh, I was horrified. And then they put me on this little circle not to move too much. They also brought somebody to choreograph my song, you know? You know, and then afterwards, I think it's Peter Waterman, he said, Sue, Sue doesn't need this. I mean, you can't bring an English person to teach me how to dance reggae, you know? <laughs> so I just did my little thing, and next day, all the reviews and things, and the record just jumped like 25 places up the chart. So I did about, between Hurt So Good and Love Me Baby, I did about six Top of the Pops. And then out of the blue recently, I saw it on YouTube. You know? <laughs> I was so laughing at myself. <laughs>